What I want to do now is actually take you through a skin-to-skin -skin robotic ascending colectomy. In a little bit of case context here, this is a very pleasant 87-year-old morbidly obese female with a um, cecal cancer. Um, she was a lot thinner on the inside than she was on the outside, so thankfully that worked out pretty well. But I want to just walk you through all the nuts and bolts of the case um, and just show you the different uh, techniques as I scrub through the video. Um, so the first step in all these cases is obviously to place, uh, establish a pneumoperitoneum, uh, place the ports in a typical configuration. And this is on an XI robot. And then, uh, of course, restore normal anatomy. One of the first moves here is to flip the, oh, the omentum above the transverse colon, essentially trying to reflect the transverse music colon opening up the retroperitoneum. This is an older video, as you can tell, because I'm using a hook cautery. I switched back to scissors about 200 cases ago but the, the video still has some good teaching points in it. What I'm doing here is uh, I try to laparoscopically position beforehand uh, everything, but I was hindered by some adhesion, so uh, that's why we're getting the, uh, these um, adhesions taken down now uh, using the robotic instrumentation. So once that, uh, that uh, omental attachment is uh, detached, I'm gonna unfold the retroperitoneum with my arm number four, which is my tip-up grasper. I'm gonna scrub the video here, right there. You can see it grasping, and it's going to then take the transverse colon and pull it essentially up to the patient's left upper quadrant. And you'll see this more in just a second. So right here, you'll see what I'm doing is my my third arm, and I use the word third arm to reference uh, the tip up fenestrator bipolar, or a fenestrator grasper rather. It's going to grasp the mesocolon of the transverse colon and pull it up to the left upper quadrant, essentially unfolding or opening the retroperitoneal up. And you can almost always see, no matter the BMI of the patient, the, uh, the second portion of the duodenum, and then just inferior to it, you're going to see the iliacoc pedicle. And then my assist is right here holding up the, uh, the iliococ pedicle, the fold of trees, towards the patient's right lower quadrant. So it stretches out the iliococ pedicle. And I'm showing some landmarks here, the duodenum, this little swoop here, which is the iliococ pedicle. And then what I always say here is if you very, notice very carefully, there's a little bit of a reflection of light in this little divot of peritoneum. Uh, it's this little sulcus. This little sulcus is exactly where I begin the medial to lateral dissection and where I make the incision to begin the medial to lateral dissection. Now the other thing here is I always start this on the cut setting of cautery which typically helps and minimize the amount of bleeding uh, but it also um, it makes a nice um, um, uh, makes a nice clean uh, peritoneal incision. Then in a blunt fashion, I kind of just poke in this retroperitoneal plane, looking for the duodenum, and you can kind of see it starting to come into view. Um, you should see it within one to two centimeters on the medial most portion of this dissection. So in other words, to your right, which is a patient's left, you're going to start seeing duodenum come into view here. There it is right there. And then once I see that, I then completely encircle the ilococ pedicle and divide it. The reason I divide very early in this case is because I train fellows for a living, and I had one fellow uh, um, avulse the iliocolic pedicle off the SMA uh, from putting too much tension on this, so when I find it, I divide it as quickly as possible. Um, and so if that's not part of your practice, that's okay. It's just this what I like to do. So we'll basically encircle the iliocolic pedicle. This is me above the pedicle now, just creating a window. And once I've created the window, I'll come in with the vessel sealer and seal the vessel and dividing it, making sure that my duodenum stays down. Now I'm a little obsessive with how my vessel sealer is used. I typically seal four times in the same spot and then cut. Uh, it's a little obsessive and the engineers don't like it uh, with intuitive, but it's okay. It makes me sleep better at night. Now once this iliococ pedicle has been divided, what I'll then do is I'll take the divided iliococ pedicle and I'll grasp it and lift it anteriorly towards the abdominal wall. So let that play through here. Lifting it anteriorly, and you can kind of get an impression here 
that there is the plane that I need to be in. And actually, I'm a little bit deep in this video. That's why I like to use it to show you my mistakes too. Start, start lifting this plane up and brushing that plane down. And my goal of this dissection actually is to head towards the patient's right lower quadrant, essentially peeling the cecum off of the retroperitoneum. And then I mentally make a right turn or a north or north or, uh, northward turn, essentially, and head towards the liver. So I peel the cecum off, and then as I'm hanging a right on the dissection, I'm peeling the ascending colon off. And my goal of this dissection is to head all the way up to the liver to make a defect in the hepatococcal ligament so I can see the hepatococcal ligament, I can see the gallbladder and the liver medially, and that's when I know my medial dissection has been complete. And when, uh, what I'll do is I'll scrub the, the, the video forward just a little bit here. I'm just brushing down, brushing down. You can see duodenum there to the right of the screen. Getting my third arm in action a little bit to help out with the, uh, the, um, the retraction. And this is still retroperitoneally. What I'm doing here is I'm lifting with my left hand. I'm pushing down with my right. Lifting with the left, pushing down with the right until I can get, make that nice big defect in the hepatococcal ligament. Now, the nice thing about the XI robot is you can go from 30 down to 30 up with the camera. So here I just went from 30 down to 30 up so I can get a little bit of a better view of this. I'm going to lift up the hepatic flexure essentially with my left hand. I push down to my right and you should see the abdominal wall. There it is. And I can see the edge, the lateral edge of the liver, and I'll keep pushing down with my right hand until I know that I've distally dissected as much as I want to dissect. And actually, this is the exact same way I do a subtotal colectomy. So if I'm doing a subtotal or total, I start on the right typically, and I will just keep pushing down, pushing down, pushing down all the way to the right or the, the, towards the patient's left distally until I get to the middle colics, and I divide the middle colics. Then I keep going distally until I get the splenic flexure, get into the lesser sac, and I just keep working my way to the right. And that's how that case progresses, typically in a medial plateau fashion. So once the medial dissection is done, then what I do is I change my attention to the lateral dissection. And I start from top down, hepatic flexure, down to the cecum. So here my third arm then lifts up the uh, transverse, uh, the, the lifts up the omentum off the transverse colon. She has some bizarro adhesions here, so we're going to divide those. And my assist is going to now pull the hepatic flexure down to the feet. And what that does is it allows me to expose the defect that I just created in the retroperitoneal plane. So said another way, what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to now go anterior. I'm trying to identify that big hole that I just created in the retroperitoneal dissection so that I can easily identify and know what's safe to take. So let me skip forward just here just a bit. You'll see here. where that defect is. It's a little tough to see in this frame, but there's the defect right there that I created immediately. So as the video progresses, what I'll do is, there it is right there, I'm gonna shove my vessel here in that spot, and I know everything to my left is safe to take and there's nothing there. And what I'll do here is I typically actually do this with scissors uh, nowadays, but I'm, I'm here, I'm just sealing it with the vessel here since there was a, some momentum stuck. And I'll get, I'll script forward here a little bit more, get the, the hook cautery in this, in this video, and just unzip immediately medial to the white line of Tolt, unfolding the right colon, and mobilizing everything down to the level of the cecum. It's not uncommon to where I don't use my assist very much in these operations. I still always have an assist port. I, as a um, 
program director of a fellowship. I train fellows for a living, and so I always like to have an assist port there, number one, for suture exchange, but really so that way the fellows can stay involved if they're at bedside, or even more importantly in my mind is if I'm at the bedside, I can still maintain uh, a device to point and teach and also to maintain some control of the operation. But in your practices, you may not need that assist port, but I, I certainly do uh, use it and I'm very... Uh, um, um, uh, I do very, I very much encourage using it if, um, if you, if you so wish. So here I'm just going to continue the mobilization of the right colon. I'm going to skip forward just a little bit more here, and eventually, I can, uh, we'll complete the right colonic mobilization. Final attachments of this uh, terminal ilium and the cecum to the right lower quadrant, and this is really the pelvis here. Appendix is coming into view there. And some may ask, what's my third arm doing right now? It's off, it's off camera right now, but basically what the third arm is doing is it's grabbing the hepatic flexor and pulling it towards the patient's left upper quadrant. So it's truly giving me uh, as much counter traction uh, and, and like macro retraction as possible. And my left hand, which is my fenestrated bipolar, is doing all that, you know, that, the, the left-handed work that, uh, of the active and dynamic retraction as we're moving through the case. So those are final terminal ileal attachments. And my cyst, as you see, is not really doing too much in this case. Now, what I'm going to say here, I'm going to pause just for a second and mention. So philosophically, what I've just done is I've just completed the medial cloud dissection. I've just done the, the uh, taken the ilicoc vessels. I've just freed the duodenum, and I've just completed the mobilization of the right colon. So the next move here is to begin the the step of the choreography where I'm going to divide the terminal ilium, and I'm going to divide the transverse colon. Then I'm going to set up for the anastomosis. So here, in order to set up for the terminal ileal division, I then um, rotate the entire colon up laterally. I'm pushing it out laterally and then I'm fishing out the divided iliococ pedicle right there. And I'm going to take the divided iliococ pedicle with my third arm and pull it up to my left shoulder, the patient's left shoulder. So this pulls to the left shoulder. And as it's pulling to the left shoulder, you can see it creates this nice little V within the mesentery of the terminal ilium. Now, I know this video, the camera's a little dirty, so we're going to pull it out, clean it, put it back in. And you can see here that once the camera goes back in, you can see that this little V gets formed. And then that's formed by my, my third arm pulling to the left shoulder. I'm going to then use my vessel sealer to divide the terminal ileal mesentery. And I usually do two, two burns on the mesentery with the vessel sealer. And I aim towards the fold of Treves. So you'll see my assist here in just a second is going to grab the fold of Treves and tent it up. You can see how it really lines up the mesentery just right. And actually you can also see that let's say this is a Crohn's patient. Now if this is a Crohn's patient that you want to take a little more mesentery and you want to take a little bit more of the TI, you just simply, instead of taking the vessels that are in this direction, based on where your assist is pulling, you just move this a little bit more proximal, a little bit to the left. Drop the angle down just a little bit and have your assist pull that portion of bowel up, and it lines you up perfectly to take as much small bowel or as little small bowel as you want. Just keep dividing this. Keep dividing, keep dividing. What I'll do then is essentially keep dividing until I've skeletonized it down to the mesenteric border of the terminal ilium. And I will firefly. And then I will bring the stapler in and divide. So now I'm going to divide the stapler. Typically it takes a single load of the, a blue stapler. And again, this can be done with a linear stapler if you want. Then the next move here is to head up towards the patient's right upper quadrant and divide the colon exactly where you want it to be divided. So in this case, this lady had a sequel cancer. Um, uh, she just needed essentially her right colon taken out, so I'm not worried about doing a, an extended right hemicolectomy. So I'm going to essentially divide it right uh, at the uh, distal to the hepatic flexure. So what I've done with my third arm is I've grasped the transverse colon. I've elevated it. As you can see here, 
I've elevated it to the patient's uh, kind of midepigastrum, so I'll do it again here. And you can see a little bit of duodenum is kind of there. I'm going to push that down in just a second. And then I'm just going to divide the mesentery of the transverse colon with the vessel seater. So here, you see me just dividing the mesentery. And this actually could be the most painful part of the case is you're just kind of fighting, you're swimming in mesentery, you're swimming in omentum, and this is a, definitely a challenging part of the operation. It just takes patience and perseverance, and frankly, it takes big bites with the vessels here um, that look a little bit scary at first, but you have to understand that the vessels here is actually a very small instrument. It's just magnified 10 times uh, on the robot, so take liberal bites with the vessels here, and you'll eventually get through uh, the transverse mesocolon. And let me scrub forward here. Once the term, the transverse colon has completely been skeletonized, and again, you can see where my third arm has been holding up the whole time. It's basically holding up the point of division of the transverse colon. Once this is done, I'll then bring my stapler in and slide it in. And I typically like to keep the tinea libra, which is this tinea there. I try to keep the tinea libra within the crotch of the stapler. And I use all my instruments to kind of help out, help out and... Um, uh, lining this up just right. And then what I'll do here is I'll firefly. And um, I'm obsessed with firefly. I really like it because there's been times where it saves me, in, like in this video. I shot firefly and actually, you see here, that I was off by about a centimeter. Um, so you can see the stapler kind of in the mid portion of the field, that it wasn't perfusing right up to the where the stapler was uh, was sitting. And so I just simply open it up and advance it just a little bit to the patient's, uh, or to the screen right of the, to the patient's left, a little bit more distal on the colon, and everything tends to, um, tends to make me sleep a little bit better that way. Once this division is done, I then uh, will park the specimen above the uh, right lobe of the liver and set up for the anastomosis.